After teasing it in the last few weeks, WCW changed the entire direction of the main storyline in the company built since January 4 with Ric Flair going heel after buying off referee Charles Robinson to win the title for the 14th time, and Hulk Hogan going babyface after hulking up to a big reaction for the first time in years and having the match won several times before the finish at the uncensored pay-per-view. Unlike last Monday when WCW experimented with the show format to counter Raw at 9 p.m., this week the concept was slightly changed with the show going to the arena for several matches, but still with the idea that Night Row is officially kicking off at 9 p.m. by building the unopposed hour as a pre-show for the next two. The opening took place at 8.55 with the announcers introducing the show and Ric Flair's limousine arrived to the building for the crossover segment. Flair Anderson and Robinson came out for Rick's title win follow-up promo, Flair said that tonight the wrestling business is starting all over again because he's officially the most powerful person in the industry as the world champion and permanent president of WCW, bringing out Bill Goldberg to the ring, saying that last week before the NWO jumped in the ring he had him begging for his life, challenging Flair to a title match tonight, bringing out Nash saying that he's the number one contender instead. Nash told Flair that last night he robbed Hogan before telling Goldberg that he might have 200 wins but he's got one loss and he's looking at him. Hogan was the last one out telling Flair that he had him bleeding and pinned in the cage, saying that he wants Flair and Nash wants Goldberg to set up a tag match, as Goldberg accepted saying that he's gonna take all three out on the way to winning the belt back. With the hot big star power segment resembling Raw's usual opening promos led to a result not seen in months, as WCW which ended the unopposed hour with a 5 rating, maintained the entire audience to start with its biggest viewership in months with a 5 first quarter rating. The San Jose Arena erupted with Rock coming out to start Raw to a huge babyface reaction, continuing the weight of the inevitable babyface turn with the crowd singing along throughout the entire promo. Rock hyped the WrestleMania main event in 13 days before turning to Paul White with them brawling last night on Heat after Austin hinted that they might be working together against the corporation, saying that Vince McMahon promised him answers and didn't deliver calling him out to the ring with the crowd popping big for the Rock vs McMahon confrontation. Vince responded saying that maybe this Rock stuff is getting to his head and maybe Dwayne needs a reality check after everything he has done for his family over three generations, telling him to remember everything his father did for Peter Maivia and everything he did for Rocky Johnson, saying that the WWF title belongs to him and he sees Rock like his son Shane with Paul White only hired to protect the family, bringing him out to the ring with McMahon since last night officially referring to him as the big show for the first time, as with both shows having big star power segments going neck and neck at the same time, Raw opened with a slight lead of 5.2 to 5 rating margin. With both shows unusually starting neck and neck in the first quarter, things returned to a more normal viewing pattern between 9.15 to 9.30, with WCW having Billy Kidman defending the cruiserweight belt against Rey Mysterio in a 10-minute match with a commercial break in the middle, ending with Rey going over to win the belt with a top rope bulldog for the finish, with the quarter seeing a massive turnover of viewers after WCW successfully maintained its entire audience with the first segment in one of the only times in show history, as Raw's opening segment which went over 22 minutes in total, picked up big for its conclusion along with Road Dogg vs Valvini's IC title match with over 1.3 million viewers to a show high 6.3 rating while WCW dropped from a 5 to a 
seeing Vince telling White that he brought him in huge expense to do a job, before slapping him to lead to White almost taking him out and Vince booking the main event tag with Rock and White against Austin and Mankind. Promoted throughout as the biggest tag match in Raw history with both shows now setting up mega tag matches between the top four performers in each company to go head to head in almost two hours. Both shows came in front of sold-out crowds in San Jose and Cincinnati combining for over 27,000 people, with the WWF continuing to do its biggest house show business in history on the road with another two events during the week in Anaheim and Las Vegas combining for over 26,000, making it over 60,000 people in attendance for the last four shows in the past two weeks headlined by Rock and Kane vs Austin and Mankind tag matches. In addition to that the company sent out a press release on the booming business in every department, noting that he'd increased USA Network numbers by 77% compared to what previously aired on Sunday nights, along with ratings for secondary shows Livewire and Superstars reaching all-time heights and the company website is viewed over 50 million times a month. Next on Night Row was Benoit and Malenko defending the tag belts against Morris and Barbarian to pick up over 400,000 viewers, while Raw had Shane McMahon in a WrestleMania warm-up match against Road Warriors Patterson and Briscoe, ending up with Shane going over before Undertaker and the Ministry showed up on the Titan Tron outside McMahon's house to start the angle for the next hour with Taker waiting for Stephanie to arrive. Scott Steiner and Buff Bagwell were out next with Steiner cutting a promo on Cincinnati before turning to Bagwell. Steiner told Bagwell that he cost him the match last night and is not the same since his neck injury, saying that he doesn't belong in the NWO anymore, with Buff responding saying that for the last three months he made Steiner look good in every appearance, but since he got back into shape Scott changed his tune and got a little jealous as Steiner told him that he will always be second best standing next to him, ending up with Steiner turning on him with rumors of legit heat between them flying around, to end the almost year-long Steiner-Bagwell on-screen partnership that turned into one of the consistent viewership movers on the show for the majority of it, with this segment picking up over 600,000 viewers to a 4.4 rating. With the reformation of the NWO elite angle now almost completely dropped with Scott Hall and Lex Luger out with leg and arm injuries, Bagwell kicked out and Hogan turning face. While that was going on Raw had the McMahons trying to call home with Taker waiting outside, and JR coming out with a surprise on the back of Noen and Jarrett vs Public Enemy tag match, with the company playing off the rumors of the heat on Public Enemy and the TV storyline coming off the infamous Acolytes match on March 7. WCW opened its third hour having Horse vs Stevie Ray going four minutes after the reveal of Hogan telling every member of NWO Black and White that they're the leader of the group, while Raw had a loaded top of the hour quarter starting with a Bossman vs Midian cage match while the announcers continued to talk over each other with JR sitting in front of Cole and inviting Lawler to join him on the A-team. The cage match saw the corporation coming out to send a message to the Ministry if they don't get away from McMahon's house, with Taker responding that the Ministry are willing to be sacrificed telling Vince to do what he has to do and Taker will soon do as well when his family come back home. The second half of the quarter saw a comedic skit with Jerry Lawler and Sable at the Playboy Mansion, and Sable coming out to promote the magazine on track to be the most selling of all time after being released last Monday. With the segments seeing Raw jump over 800,000 viewers to a joint show high 6.3 rating.
After being on a vacation in France in the last two weeks and handing the company creative keys to Nash Hogan Sullivan and Dusty Rhodes, Eric Bischoff returned from his break to revise the state of the company with him only getting phone updates from several people while overseas. Eric who was burned out from the last few years of running the company and the recent constant battles with Turner executives over their interference in the content of the TV product handed more responsibility than ever before to the creative team headed by Nash to implement their ideas, with politics continuing to run the company with personal agendas clashing behind the scenes. With WCW having Conan vs Disco going 10 minutes with Disco going over after Luger's interference, Raw had an hardcore title match with Billy Gunn going over Bob Holly to win the belt. Coming an hour after Road Dogg won the IC title with both Outlaws switching programs and winning the opposite titles. With the WWF turnaround coming along with the new Attitude marketing campaign, WCW planned a massive rebranding of the company to debut on April 5 from the MGM Grand in Las Vegas, with new TV sets and logos set to debut to refresh the look of the product which was consistent since first going on the air in September 95, with the company planning one of the biggest shows of the year for the launch while in addition to the presentation change, Randy Savage and Sting are expected to return on the night. Minutes before the big headline tag matches WCW had a 13-minute Booker vs Jericho TV title match, while Raw had Triple H coming to the ring to call out Kane, ending up with Kane taking out Hunter and in a big swerve revealing himself as Taker under the mask, telling McMahon that he can get him anytime any place. WCW started to rebound big in the final quarter with the entrances and first half of the main event tag match, bumping the show over 800,000 viewers to a 4.1 rating, with the recent turns creating a unique dynamic in the match with Flair transitioning into his heel role, Nash working as a tweeter while Hogan is transitioning to a babyface role with a more aggressive style in the ring, and Goldberg continuing his defined position as before as the top babyface in the company. The match saw Goldberg and Flair turning on each other while Hogan and Nash worked as team, with the crowd reactions changing throughout depending on who was in the ring, as Hogan was cheered over Flair while Goldberg was cheered against all three. Raw going against the loaded WCW tag match maintained its lead with a 5.4 rating for the first half of the match, going 12 minutes in front of a hot crowd popping big throughout with the in-ring exchanges between Austin and Rock as the WrestleMania preview and the first interaction of Austin and Paul White in Big Show's official WWF debut. With the pay-per-view in less than two weeks already predicted by cable companies to break every industry record in history after the recent Rumble's huge number, the company announced a WrestleMania Rage Party TV special to air on the USA Network on the day before the event, promoting every top name in the company to be there as the final sell for the show. The Goldberg and Flair vs Hogan and Nash tag match jumped huge in the overrun with an additional 1.5 million viewers to a 5.4 rating, gaining over 2.3 million viewers in total for the duration of the match to slightly overtake Raw's main event tag with a 5.3, making it the first WCW segment to beat Raw in almost two months since January 25, with the show overall while staying in the same range with a 4.3 rating showing big interest in the main event angle with both segments splitting the audience with Raw almost equally to go over the 5 rating range, ending up with Hogan again having the match won with Robinson refusing to count the fall, and Goldberg spearing Hogan to close the show. 
The Rock and Big Show vs Austin in Mankind tag match ended with all four brawling at ringside, with both main events not giving the other any advantage by ending the match before the other, as both main events continued until the second each show went off the air, with the head-to-head -head mega tag matches in one of the biggest simultaneous display of star power in wrestling history, combining for a huge viewership peak of over 12.5 million viewers to end the broadcasts at 11.05 pm.